Shalom, shalom, Israel. Most high Christ, bless. You are now tuned in with 15 minutes with a captain. I'm Captain Gannon to my right. Officer Simon Judah. And today's class, the topic is, help, there's a God in my house. <laughs> help, there's a God in my house. <laughs> Get Genesis 1 and 16. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 16. For all you sisters out there that don't think you should treat your husband like Christ. You want 3 and 16 or 1 and 16? Uh, one, yeah, I'm sorry, 3 and 16. For all you sisters out there, should you treat your husband like Christ? Genesis chapter 3 and verse 16. Read. Unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow. I will greatly multiply thy sorrow. Go ahead. And conception. Uh -huh. And sorrow thou shalt bring forth children. And sorrow thou shalt bring forth children. And thy desire shall be to thy husband. Uh -huh. And he shall rule over thee. And he shall rule over thee. I know that's true. Maybe I said it again. He shall rule over, over thee. thee. It's the reason why the Lord said that. The Lord said, your man, your husband, your righteous man, was built and put on this earth to rule over you. Not 50-50, not 75-25, 100 zero. It's a dictatorship. And, and, and we're going to go to more of that. Get Matthew 19 and 4. Let's see why. Let's see why. Let's see what the man is, is giving up. Matthew... 19 and 4. Matthew chapter 19 and verse 4. Go ahead. And he said, and he answered and said unto them, Have you not read that, that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? So Christ is given the account of the beginning. The Lord made us man and female, Adam and Eve, man and woman, for she came out of man. Read on. And said, for this cause shall a man leave father and mother, Read. and shall cleave to his wife. Y'all understand? Y'all really understand what Christ is saying. He said, a man, a man will leave his mother who's nursed him all his life, and his father who's provided with him all his life, will leave all of them to the curb just to dwell with his wife. I can understand how, how important and how of a, of a connection that, that, that marriage is. This brother is giving up everything. Giving up everything to be your husband. To provide for you. Let's read on. Watch this. Get 1st Ezra 4 and 20. Let's prove that. 1st Ezra chapter 4 verse 20. So the question is, should you treat your husband like Christ? 1st Ezra 4 and 20. Read that. 1st Ezra chapter 4 and verse 20. Listen to what our forefather Zerubbabel uh, uh, brought out. Read on. And man leaveth his own father that brought him up and his own country and cleaveth unto his wife. A man will leave his father in his own country, his own land, to go and be with his wife. Y'all see what this man is giving up? Y'all see that? This man is giving up everything to be with your behind. <laughs> Read on. He sticketh not to spend his life with his wife. Read. And remembereth neither father, nor mother, nor country. He's like, hey, I'm married now. This woman is now my purpose. This woman has now taken over the role, the role of, 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 of my purpose. My purpose is to be her, her Lord, her husband, to provide, to take care of, to deal with according to knowledge, for she is the weaker vessel. That's my purpose. No longer is mother and father my purpose. My homeland not my purpose. My wife is. Read on. By this you must also you must know that women have dominion over you. Read on. Do you not labor and toil and give and bring all to the woman? Y'all hear what rule bill our forefathers saying? A man labor and toil, go to work, slave like us, and work like a slave from sun up to sundown. Just to make sure his wife got a place to a place to live, food on the table, she got a, a nice head wrap, she got some nice fringes on with a nice long flowy dress. I don't give a dog on if I my shirt could be busted, my shirt could have holes in it. I don't care as long as the wife is good, 
I'm going to keep going to work. That's what Zerubbabel is saying. Read on. Yea, a man taketh his sword and goeth his way to rob and to steal. Y'all know that's going on today. That's why a lot of Negroes, uh, uh, <laughs> a lot of black people, <laughs> black people in prison because of the woman. A lot of drug dealers are selling dope so they can get that, that big booty uh, Judy down the block. Read on. To sail upon the sea and upon the rivers. Read. And looketh, up, looketh upon a lion and goeth into the darkness. Looketh upon a lion and go in the darkness. Read on. And when he hath stolen, spoiled, and robbed, he bringeth it to his love. Y'all see that? Zuber, Zerubbabel saying that the men will go and kill a lion to take away the spoil to go bring it to his wife. That's how powerful a man's commitment is. A man's love is powerful to his wife. You read that in Proverbs chapter 6. Uh, where you at? Verse 25. Verse 25. Wherefore a man loveth his wife better than father or mother. A man loveth his wife better than father or mother. Go to Hebrews 13 4. Go to Hebrews 13 4. So the question is, should you treat your husband like Christ? Hebrews 13 and 4. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 4. Marriage is honorable in all, mm -hmm. and the bed undefiled. Read. But whoremongers and adulterers God will judge. So God says marriage is honorable. Marriage is an honorable thing. What that means is the order of marriage is honorable. The man ruling over the woman, that's honorable. The woman being of the man, that's honorable. The woman submitting herself in all things, that's honorable. God says marriage is honorable above all. So why would you commit to change the order? Why do you wish to change that order when that order is honorable? Get 1 Corinthians 7 and 2. 1 Corinthians 7 and 2. Some of y'all treat your husbands like an uncle. Mm. <laughs> Some of y'all treat your husbands like that drunk uncle that you hate to go around. Oh. Read. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 2. Go ahead. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication. To avoid fornication. Let every man have his own wife. Let every man have his own wife. So you got to understand this man who, met, who chose you to be his wife married you so that he can give up the affairs of the world. He gave up fornication to marry you. He gave up uh, whoredom to marry you. He gave up drugs, he gave up anything to marry you. And you don't find him worthy enough to, to be treated like Christ? You don't find him worthy enough to be called Lord? To be looked at as a God on earth? He gave it up for you. Go to 1 Peter 3 and 7. Watch this. I'm going to touch on something. Go to 1 Peter 3 and 7. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 7. Mm -hmm. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge. Dwell with them according, not talking about the women, dwell with them according to the laws of God, the order. Read on. Giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel. We understand that child a weaker vessel. We understand that. Read on. And as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. Being heirs together in the grace of life. You know what sisters hear that scripture? They think being heirs together means that we are the same. <laughs> That's not what that means. Being heirs together does not mean that I have to do the things that you do. Being heirs together does not mean that I have submit. I have to submit myself to what you want. That's not what being heirs together means. Being heirs together means that you come from me. Therefore, the order is man over woman. And when we become that again, now we become one. We become one in the order of God. Go to Proverbs 18, 22. Go to Proverbs 18, verse 22. Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 22. Whoso findeth a wife 
findeth a good thing. Y'all see that? It says, whoso findeth the wife, it says the man finds the wife. A lot of you sisters out there, you on a hunt for rod. You on a hunt. You, you got 10 prospects <laughs> on your to-do list. God says a man finds a wife. Whoso findeth the wife, findeth a good thing. A man finds the wife. Go to Colossians 3.18. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 18. Come on. Wives, submit yourselves. Uh-oh. Read it again. Wives, submit yourselves. Uh-oh. Let's, let, let, let's get that definition. Let's get that definition of submit. To yield to governance or authority. Y'all see that? Mm. To yield oneself to the authority or will of another. The, the synonyms, surrender. And that's heavy. Read that script again. Colossians 3.18. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 18. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as it is fit unto the Lord. God says submit or surrender yourself to your husband as it is fit unto the Lord. Meaning when you do that, the Lord sees that that's necessary, that's good, that's honorable. When you submit, when you surrender yourself to your husband. Why? Because he's God on the earth. He's Christ in his house. Go to uh, Ephesians 5 and 21. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 21. Go ahead. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Submitting yourselves one. Keep reading. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands. Surrender yourselves unto your husbands. Read on. As unto the Lord. As you would the Lord. You know how sisters pray and they pray to the Father. Lord, forgive me, Lord. I'm sorry, Lord. Don't kill me, Lord. Forgive me, forgive me. You understand that how can you ask how can you ask for forgiveness from God when you don't submit yourself to your husband who is God on earth? You really think if you're disrespecting God on earth that you're going to respect God in heaven? <laughs> you crazy. Read on. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. Read on. For the husband is as the head of the wife. The husband is the head of the wife. Even as Christ is the head of the church. Just like Christ is the head of the church. And he is the savior of the body. And he is the savior of the body. You know what that means, sisters, wives? Mm. You cannot be saved unless you go through your husband righteously. What that means is, if you are disrespecting your husband... There's no way you're going to make it. You're not making it. Because if you disrespect your husband, you will, you will disrespect Christ, whom your husband represents. Your husband is, is the ambassador of Christ. If you kill the ambassador, you it's wartime. <laughs> when the nation sends an, an ambassador and that nation kills the ambassador, it's no more talking. Ain't no more peace treaties. Ain't no more forgiveness. Ain't no more I'm sorry. Y'all seen the movie 300? When they kick the dude, I forget. Oh, this is Sparta. Boom. Kick the ambassador in the pit. It was wartime after that. The same thing. You disrespecting your husband, which is the ambassador of Christ, you are disrespecting Christ. Therefore, disrespecting the father. Ain't no way you making it. No way you making it. Read on. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, mm -hmm. So let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. So you know what that means, sisters? You know what that means for you married sisters and, and, and you single sisters that want to get married? And even those in the world that, Lord's will you repent, you hear, the, you hear this, uh, watch this video. That means when you have a righteous husband, I mean, when your husband is keeping the commandments of God and he's enduring, he's, he's trying, he's trying, and he's keeping the commandments to the best of his ability. That means when he say jump, your response should be, how high? That's what your response should be. Read it again. Come on, they think we're making this up. Read it again. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Tell me, if your husband has sat down and kicked off his shoes, and he say, baby, can, can you get up and make me a glass of water? There should not be a... Uh, I've been in the kitchen all day. You can't make it. 
Read it again. Read it again. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. God says everything. You are in subjection to your husband in everything. How are you in subjection to the captain, but your husband, that's a soldier, you don't even listen to him at home. You subjection to the deacon, but your husband, that's an officer of, of 50, you, you call him a nigga at the house. That's some evil stuff, man. That's some evil, evil stuff. What verse you at? Verse 25. Uh, go uh, to, no, 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 verse 24. Go to uh, verse 31. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 31. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife. Read on. And they too shall be one flesh. One flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Read on. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself. Read. And that the wife see that she reverence her husband. Reverence your husband. You know what that means? Regard. Respect. Hold that high estate. Reverence your husband. That means every decision that you think you're going to make needs to go through your husband. No way in heck your husband should find out third hand about something that you have decided to do. That's not reverencing your husband. That's not reverencing your husband. Go to Sirach chapter 26 and verse 26. For all you sisters out there that, that look at your husband as a nigga. Look at your husband as a, a no good. But the Lord said he's a God on earth. Sirach chapter 26 and verse 26. Go ahead. A woman that honoreth her husband shall be judged wise of all. Y'all know what that honor goes to? Reverence. Hold on, we're going to read it. This is the definition of reverence. Deep respect for someone or something. High esteem. High regard. That means your husband comes before everybody. Your husband, let me say that again. Your husband comes before everybody. That's what it means to hold that high regard, high esteem. You got some more? Oh, it's the synonym. Synonym. Let's see. Admire, respect, value, cherish, appreciate. Dang. <laughs> Which one of you wives ever went to your husband and said, my Lord, I appreciate everything you're doing for me. Everything that you have done for this family. I appreciate you going to camp. I appreciate you keeping the commandments. I appreciate you fighting against temptation. I appreciate you. I appreciate you leading me to the kingdom. Y'all don't even see it like that. Y'all think y'all leading yourselves. Y'all think y'all leading yourselves to the kingdom. Your husband's leading you to the kingdom. It's Rock 26, 26. Oh, we already read that. Go to uh, verse 20, uh, chapter 26, verse 14. Sirach chapter 26 and verse 14. Go ahead. A silent and loving woman is a gift of the Lord. A silent and loving woman is a gift from the Lord. We don't. And there is nothing so much worth as a mind well instructed. Who you think is instructing that mind? Your husband. A mind well instructed is instructed from your husband. Y'all don't see that. Y'all think y'all doing it your own. Go to 1 Corinthians 11 and 8. You know what? Go to 1 Peter 3 and 5 real quick. We got a few more scripts. Going to read real quick. 1 Peter 3 and 5. 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 5. For this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God the heavens were of old and the earth stand... Oh, wait. 1 Peter 3 and 5. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 5. Go ahead. After, for after this manner in the old time, the holy women also who trusted in God Adorn themselves, being in subjection unto their own husbands. It says the holy women of old trusted God. And in trusting God, y'all see what that, y'all see what uh, uh, Paul just said? In trusting God, uh, Peter said, in trusting God, they submitted themselves to their husbands. So those of you that don't believe and don't trust God, you the, you are the devils. In the, you are the, the, what they call it, the dragons in the house. Dragons don't believe in God. <laughs> Dragons don't reverence their husbands. Dragons don't submit to their husbands. We don't. 
Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord. Calling him what? Lord. Some of y'all don't even call your husband Lord. Some of y'all call your boss sir, but call your husband's nigga. Some of y'all call your boss sir, but call your husband's by their first name. <laughs> Go to Jeremiah 6 and 2. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. 6 and 2. Jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 2. Watch this. Jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 2. I have likened the daughter of Zion to a comely and delicate woman. So the Lord says he has likened the daughter of Zion, the Israelites, to a comely and delicate woman. Go to Jeremiah 3 and 1. Watch this. Jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 1. Go ahead. They say if a man put away his wife and she go from him and become another man's, uh -huh. shall he return unto her again? Uh -huh. Shall not that land be greatly polluted? Go ahead. But thou hast played the harlot, and with many lovers yet returned again to me. What did God say? That, but thou hast played the harlot with many lovers, yet returned again to me, saith the Lord. God says, you have played the harlot with many lovers, but turn again to me. We're going to say what he said. Jump down to verse 14. Verse 14. Turn, O backsliding children, saith the Lord, for I am married unto you. God says he's married to the nation of Israel. He says, you have played the whore, but return back to me. I see you as a comely woman. I am married to you. I am married to you. Watch this. And I will take you. One that's, of it, that's it. Go to 1 Corinthians 11 and 8. I am married to you. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 8. For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. Go ahead. Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. The man was created in God's image. The man was created in the image of God. Watch this. Go to Psalms 82 and 6. The man was created in God's image. God is married to the nation of Israel. Right? Watch what God says about the nation of Israel, the men of Israel. Psalms chapter 82 and verse 6. I have said, ye are gods. What did God call us? Ye are gods. Go to, go to, go to John 10, 34. Go to John 10, 34. John chapter 10 and verse 34. Jesus answered them. Is it not written in your law? I said, ye are gods. So the Most High called us gods, and Christ requoted to let us to, to uh, uh, remind the Pharisees, "Hey, it is not written in your law that ye are gods." I want, I want y'all to examine this: the God of heaven and earth, the Creator of all the universe, made us in the image of Him. Therefore, made us gods. Psalms eighty twenty six says, "Ye are gods." Jeremiah three and fourteen says, "I am married to you." So you're telling me that the God of heaven and earth would acknowledge his creation as God's, but you woman that came from this God won't acknowledge that? <laughs> you won't acknowledge that? The God of heaven and earth acknowledged that, yes, these men, they're gods. They're made in my image. I am married to the nation of Israel, and he called us gods. On earth, we are married to the women of Israel, but they won't even lift their tongue to say we lords, that we are gods on the earth. So the question is, should you treat us, your husband like Christ? Yes! Because God says that we are gods on the earth. And without us, there's no salvation. Without the men, there is no kingdom. Vice versa. But it starts with you must reverence your husband. You must fall into subjection. You must bridle your tongue. You cannot get the last word. You can't get the last say so. Your husband was put on this earth to rule over you. All right? So, the, the, the title was, Help! There's a God in my house. And guess what, sister? That's the best title. You, you right. There is a God in your house. And it's high time you start treating them like one. All right? So this has been 15 Minutes with a Captain. And with that, we say shalom. Shalom. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed 
But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.